exams. And then number four, for the case of drawing, you will require to have a graph book. You will have to have a graph book with you. You will need to have a graph book with you. And the basic one, which is to have your exercise book. Exercise book. You must have an exercise book and your pens. You must have an exercise book and your pens. Therefore, do not get into any preparation or into any exam for mathematics if you don't have these uh, five uh, items. The first three items, the calculator, the geometrical set, and the mathematical table, are necessary and they're required even during the exams. Therefore, you'll be required to get to the exam room with your calculator, with your geometrical set and the instruments, and the mathematical table plus your pens. The other ones, which is the graph book and the exercise book, will only be necessary for you to carry out a revision so that you are able to follow track on what you are revising on. And it's always important to have the right uh, reference books and the right textbooks that are recommended to help you revise on those areas that you'll be revising on. Therefore, uh, when you get to the exam preparation, we've agreed that there are two papers. There is mathematics paper one, and there is mathematics paper two. For today, we are discussing the concepts in mathematics paper one, which are majorly form one and form two work. And as you will realize, that mathematics paper one, the mathematics paper one, is about 75% of the content, 75% of the content will cover form one and form two work. 75% of the content will cover form one and form two work. And the remaining 25%, the remaining 25% will cover form form three and form four work. Therefore, it is easier to tell that as a candidate, if you want to do well in paper one, you must have to put a lot of emphasis on form one and two, even though form three and four will still count in that paper. Out of these 75%, the lion's share of the score of the marks in paper one will come from form to work. So about 50% of this 75, about 50% of it will come from form to work. And the remaining 25% or thereabout of this work will come from form one work. Therefore, it tells you that form two contributes a lot to your paper one uh, sc scores. When talking about the Form 2 work, we are talking about a total of 20 topics. Total of 20 topics covered in Form 2. And Form 1, we are talking about a total of 23 topics that are covered in Form 1. But not all of them will be examined, but we shall have to integrate few concepts from each of the topics so that by the end of the, uh, the four years, all the areas should be covered and should be examined, either directly or indirectly by integrating the concepts into other topics. And it is quite simple and easier to see that once you've looked at Form 1, the same same concepts are extended to in Form 2, and so you get to know that what was taught in Form 1 is a foundation of what will come in Form 2, Form 3, and Form 4. And that's why it is easier to bring them together as an in integrated form to come up with a final standard exam that can now be able to produce, uh, to give us a, a clear picture of where you are and what you've been able to do for the four years. So in our lesson, I want to welcome you students that will discuss this paper and see how well can we prepare for this paper and in which areas do we need to put more emphasis on when we are preparing for the mathematics paper one exams. First of all, you need to understand that this paper, just like paper two, it has two sections. It has section one and it has section two. Section one 
and section two. When talking about section one, these are short structured questions uh, from question number one all the way to question number 16. Question one to question number 16. And this section has 50 marks. It has 50 marks. And the instructions are you answer all the questions. You answer all the questions. Question one up to question 16, there are short structured questions that will be answered, all of them as the instructions provide. Section two of this paper, again, it contributes 50 marks. It contributes 50 marks from question 17 all the way to question 24. But we don't answer all of them. The instructions are we answer, we answer any five questions. We answer any five questions. Each of the questions in section two has 10 marks. Each of the question has 10 marks. And therefore, when you answer five, you will have answered a maximum of 50 marks. And so 50 plus 50, then your final score will be 100 marks. And these are the sections that we are saying that cover content majorly from form one and form two work, uh, as we shall be able to highlight. Uh, our basic thing today is to be able to discuss now specifically what are the components that constitute to this uh, constitute to this uh, kind of uh, paper and how then do we go about it i will give few concepts for section 1 and few highlights for section 2 so that you get to know what are the common topics in section 1 and what are the common topics that will contribute to section 2 so our first classification, therefore, uh, in section one, we will be able to discuss a concept where we apply the use of podmas. The use of podmas. We have to understand the concept on the use of podmas. And as candidates, we are also conversant with what is podmas and how to apply podmas concept. And we all know B stands for brackets, O is of, D is division, M is multiplication, A is addition, and S is subtraction. In your syllabus, therefore, what are these topics that majorly focuses on the use of polymers? These are form one topics. We have the topic we call integers. We have what we call uh, integers. Our topics here, we have integers. We have fractions. We have fractions. And we have decimals. And we have decimals. And they are all covered in Form 1 uh, work. These topics are quite simple. And this concept is, again, quite simple because students have developed the concept all the way from primary school to high school, where then it becomes easier for them to remember and apply when they are working out questions on uh, the use of body mass. But however, I want to remind you one thing, that these questions on body mass are usually covered in two parts. You will find that there is a question that requires uh, you to apply the concept of fractions, where you are given both the numerator and the denominator, then have to work it out with the numerator first, work it at, and then work it with the denominator separately from the numerator, and then combine your solution so that you can come up with one a final answer. So to illustrate this, let's look at a case question. Let's look at a question here and see what we uh, mean by this. We are told to evaluate, to evaluate, to evaluate negative 16 divide by 4 divide by 4 plus 6 times 14 minus 2 times minus 5 over 84 divide by 14 times 3 divide by 14 times 3 that is a question from 
integers. We see the such kinds of numbers, these are integers, because an integer simply refers to a negative whole number, a positive whole number, or a zero. So which are represented here clearly in our example. If we are to work out this question together, students, we have to separate the numerator and the denominator so that we have the numerator part which has negative 16 we divide by 4 plus 6 times 14 minus 2 times minus 5 and so we apply body mass body mass in our case board mass we don't have the brackets. So we'll start with division, which is negative 16 divided by 4. So students, what is negative 16 divided by 4? Yes, the answer is negative 4. Negative 16 divided by negative, uh, positive 4, it's negative 4. Then we bring it down again and say, instead of negative 16 divided by 4, we write negative 4 plus 6 times 14 minus 2 times minus 5. So we are done with division. Next is multiplication. So what are we multiplying students? We are multiplying 6 by 4 and negative 2 by negative 5. So we'll write 6 times 14. This gives us 84, and then the other side you have negative 2 times negative 5, which gives us positive 10. Negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10, and then 6 times 14, that gives us uh, 84. Therefore, we combine these together then to have negative 4 plus 84 plus 10. Negative 4 plus 84 plus 10. This will give us negative 4 plus 94, which is uh, 90. Which is 90. So our numerator part has a solution of 90. Then extract the denominator as well. Our denominator has 84 divided by 14 times 3. 84 divided by 14 times 3. So students, what do we start with? Yes, our first step is to do a division, which is 84 divided by 14. 84 divided by 14. What is 84 divided by 14? Yes, 6. The solution is 6. And so we'll have 6 times 3. What is 6 times 3? 18. 6 times 3 is 18. Good. Therefore, you take the numerator and divide by the denominator. So our final solution will be 90 divided by 18. 90 divided by 18. What is 90 divided by 18, students? 18, 1, 18 here is 5. So the solution is 5. We shall have worked out uh, clearly the use of body mass, and in this case, referring to uh, integers. Number two, we can have the same concept, but now we apply decimals. And usually when we are asking students to apply decimals, we give a concept that is in line with this kind of example as our question number two. And you are told to evaluate without using 
without using tables or calculators. Tables or calculators, you evaluate. You evaluate without using tables or calculators. You evaluate 0 0.125 times 0 0.343 over 0 0.0049 times 0 0.25 0 0.125 times 0 0.343 divided by 0 0.049 times 0 0.25 very clearly from decimals. So therefore, what do we do in this case? Yes, our solution will be, we write as it is 0 0.125 times 0 0.343 over 0 0.0049 times 0 0.25. So students, where do we start from? Good. We count the number of decimal places from both the numerator and the denominator. And so in the numerator, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are six decimal places. In the denominator, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Again, there are six decimal places. So what do we do next? Yes, we multiply by the total value equivalent of the number of decimal places with the highest number. And because they are all the same, we shall multiply all of them by one million. Again, by one million. We multiply by one million. The one million or the six places takes out the decimal places from both. So what do we have? 125 times 343 over 49 times 25. Over 49 times 25. What is our next step, students? Yes, we cancel by looking at the common factors. And you'll be able to see 25 is 1, 25 into 125, 5 times. Then 7 into 49, 7 times. 7 into 343, that is 4 because of 28 into 63, that is 9. Then what else? It has 7, 1. 7, 7. So what is our solution? 5 times 7. What is 5 times 7? 35. 5 times 7 is 35. So we shall have evaluated this without the use of tables and calculators. Students, make sure when you're working it out, you show the cancellation because that is what then can be able to confirm that you are not using the calculators as it has been given in the instructions. That is our second item that we need to focus on, on the use of board mass. We concentrate on the, the, the decimals. And again, there are cases for the fractions that you can also look at and see how you apply board mass on fractions and so on. So that is our first area when we are revising from one work uh, to cater for paper one exams. We'll go to the second concept. And our concept number two, our concept number two is based on angles. Is based on angles. And in form one, we have a topic we call angles and plane figures. That is the topic that we have for angles in form one topic, angles and plane figures, 
angles and plane figures in Form 1. Again, to our students who are watching us, wherever you're watching us from, this is KUTV, Elim Live, and today we are discussing mathematics for Form 4, uh, particularly discussing how to go about the preparation for an exam in Mathematics Paper 1. And we are discussing Form 1 concepts that relates to Mathematics Paper 1. Our first item was based on the use of uh, board mass, and we've discussed about integers, we've discussed about uh, decimals and uh, fractions. Our second item is angles, where we are saying the topic in Form 1 about angles is what we call angles and plane figures. Therefore, we need to know how do we respond to angles in plane figures when you are given a question from that part. So we will have a question to illustrate that. And that will be our question number three. Our question number three, which is, you're told, the interior angle, the interior angle of a regular polygon, of a regular polygon, is three times, is three times the exterior angle is three times the exterior angle. Find the number of sides, number of sides of the polygon, the number of sides of the polygon, and hence, and hence, state the name, and hence give the name of the polygon, and hence give the name of the polygon <coughs> and hence give the name of the polygon that the interior angle of a regular polygon is three times the exterior angle so you find the number of sides of the polygon and hence give the name of the polygon hence give the name of the polygon so where do we begin students Yes, we will need to understand what is the exterior angle and the interior angle in this case, and know what is the relationship between the exterior and the interior angles. So we start, in our case, the interior is three times the exterior. So which one is smaller? Yes, our smaller angle is the exterior angle. So we give the exterior angle the unknown letter. We say, we let the exterior, let the exterior be X. Or use any letter. You can use Y, you can use T, R, whichever letter that you want to use, as long as we are able to form an expression that relates both the interior and exterior angle. So if the exterior angle is X, then what is the interior angle? Yes, the interior angle is 3x, good. Our interior angle, interior, will be 3x because the interior is three times the exterior. Now, what is the relationship between the interior and exterior angle, students? Yes, if you have the interior angle, the interior plus the exterior angle, you will always get 180 degrees because these angles are on a straight line. They are straight angles. Therefore, interior, which is 3x plus x, will give us 180 degrees. So what is 3x plus x, students? Good. This is 4x equal to 180. And how do we get x? We divide by 4. Divide by 4. This cancel out. And so we have 2 is 2. 2 into 180. 90. 2 is 1. 2 into 90. 45. So it is 45 what? Degrees. Therefore, one exterior angle 
is 45 degrees. One exterior angle is 45 degrees. The question is, we find the number of sides and hence give the name of the polygon. So what do we do to get the number of sides? Yes, number of sides, number of sides equal to 360 over the exterior angle. 360 over the exterior angle. <coughs> So what is it? 360 degrees. What is the exterior? 45. 45. So students, what is 360 divided by 45 using your calculators? Yes, we said we should have calculators in the mathematics class. What is 360 divided by 45? 45 is 1. 45 here, this is 8. So it is eight what? Eight sides. Therefore, the polygon has how many sides? Eight sides. Good. Now, what is the name of this polygon? What's the name of a polygon with eight sides, students? An octagon. Good. The name is an octa octagon because we say that polygons are named based with the number of sides that they have. And we gave the names of polygons in form one and said that based with the number of sides the polygon has, we obtain names. So we have the number of sides, number of sides, and then the name of the polygon. Name of the polygon. Name of the polygon versus the number of sides. So let's remind ourselves. How do you call a polygon with three sides? Because that is the lowest number. How do you call a polygon with three sides, students? Yes, this is called a triangle. This is called a triangle. We have four sides, students. Four sides. Good, a quadrilateral. And why not a rectangle? Why not a square? Squares. Rectangles, uh, parallelograms, rhombus, those are part or examples of quadrilaterals. For example, a polygon with four sides is called a quadrilateral. Five sides. How do you call a polygon with five sides? Good. Pentagon. Pentagon. Six sides. How do you call a polygon with six sides, students? Good. Call it a hexagon. Hexagon. What about seven sides? Heptagon. Good. Heptagon. Eight sides. We've me mentioned it here. Octagon. Uh -huh. Nine sides, students. Good. Call it a nonagon. And 10 sides, yes, we call it a decagon, good, decagon. So those are the names of other polygons that we will need to know in uh, Form 1. Again, students also understand that apart from just looking at the interior angle and the exterior angle, we also need to understand that we have a way of determining some of interior angles. You may be asked to determine some of interior angles. Some of interior angles. And so how do we get some of interior angles of a regular polygon? Mm -hmm. We get it by 180n less 360. 180n less 360 where n is the number of sides. Number of sides. Where n is the number of sides. Therefore, that is our second item in Form 1 under category we call the angles. And so we can go to the third one. Our third area that we need to look at again when looking at uh, 
paper one is now based on a form to work and that is what we call trigonometry number three we have trigonometry trigonometry that is now form two <coughs> Uh, you will remember that we have trigonometry in form 2, trigonometry in form 3, and trigonometry in form 4. Each of the forms uh, depends on each other, but the foundation line is trigonometry in form 2, where we discuss few concepts on, uh, on that topic. So I will give an example for us to be able to see how we respond to questions on trigonometry. And that will be our question number four. Our question number four. And you are told, given that, given that, sign, sign A equal to three over five. Find, find cos A without using tables or calculators without using tables or calculators without using tables or calculators given that sign a is 3 over 5 find cos a without using tables or calculators again what is key here is for students to understand that in trigonometry, specifically form to trigonometry, we apply the concept we call Sokatoa. We apply the concept we call Sokatoa. What do we mean by this uh, word? S stands for sign. So sign is the opposite over the hypotenuse side. C is cosine. Therefore, we say cos 